Shield Device Utopia. Hello everybody, this is Shane Armin Rowe from NVIDIAShieldZone.com. We're going to show you how to restore your Shield Android TV 5.2 using stock recovery. This will wipe out uh, the Super SU or root access, which will allow certain over-the-air updates to install properly. It does not affect the data that you have pre-installed, and I'll show you that as we go. Um, so let's take a look. First of all, we do have uh, a couple of apps that are installed here. Of course, we're rooted, so we have Super SU. Super SU is allowing Explore File Manager to be rooted. And of course, we have Explore File Manager installed. So this will show you when we're done with the stock recovery that these items will remain. However, the actual rooting uh, boot level tools that are required to give you root access will be removed, but the Super SU will not be. And you'll see how that works out in just a minute. Now, this video will assume a few things. It will assume that you are uh, plugged into your PC using a micro USB cable. It will assume that you have a mouse plugged in. Although you really don't need the mouse. It will assume that your drivers are set up and can connect your PC to the Shield Android TV. And it will assume that you have downloaded Stock Recovery 5.2 and you've extracted it into your ADB Fast Boot folder for minimal ADB Fast Boot. And uh, let's do uh, some checks just to make sure we got everything that we need. So let's go ahead and bring up a DOS box here. And I'm going to make sure that I have something called Flash All. That's what actually starts this whole mess out. Can't type tonight. All right, I've got that. Let's see, what else are we going to need? Uh, let's make sure that we have, of course, ADB in the directory, which we do. Okay, good. So now we're really ready to go. Um, a couple things I do want to show you, first of all, though, is this Flash All is the batch file that uh, actually executes all the commands to restore your system. One of the things that I found is, is right here in the middle between this command and this command, usually there's nothing here. This can be a little too fast and your computer won't recognize that you're in boot, uh, in the bootloader and then all sorts of bad things happen. It doesn't work and you freak out and then you've got to go and remove all these and run it again. Easiest thing to do is open that flash, excuse me, that flash all bat file and uh, with a pure text editor, note, uh, notepad, notepad++, plus plus, no word pad, no uh, word or anything like that. And just add one line in between here that says timeout 10. That will allow 10 seconds between this command and this command. And I, I guarantee you, you will not have any problems at that point. All right. So now that we're ready to, to go, all we need to do is do flash all. And well, actually, we can't. We're not in fact. We're not in the the uh, bootloader yet. ADB reboot bootloader. And as you can see, we lost the signal behind the DOS box. All right, there we are. We are in the bootloader. Now we're ready. Now this is done in two parts, the device boots. This is something new, by the way. Uh, previous stock recoveries did not do this in two parts. This one will do part of the uh, package first, and then it will reboot, and somewhere during the reboot process, it'll reboot again. Totally normal, and we'll uh, take a look and see how that works. All right, so it sent the first part. All right, we did indeed reboot. We lost our signal. Okay. And boot. As soon as the uh, little characters start crawling around the screen for the Android logo, it'll reboot and complete the second part. And you'll have an opportunity to see the 10 second delay in place. And you'll be able to see why, because it takes a while for that bootloader to get on there. All right, and reboot. I'm going to put this up here. Now watch carefully. Now the 10 second timer begins. Look, fast boot's not even in place back there yet. Now it's on, but it's still kind of hooking up to the PC and go. Perfect, every single time. 10 seconds seems to be the magic number, no matter uh, how slow your system is or what um, you know 
if you don't, what will happen is you'll start getting errors. All of these will error out because um, it's just not connected to the computer yet. And then you've got all sorts of problems. You've got to go and do the other part again or whatever. Terrible. Put that timeout in there. I've actually told uh, NVIDIA about it. I don't know if they're ever going to put that timeout in there in the official uh, stock recovery um, or not, but I have recommended it to them. And I've showed them a video of what happens if it doesn't work. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. And stock recovery does take a little bit of time. Um, it's normal for it to take this long. So one of the things that I see constantly is I'm getting email and questions and I uh, peruse the forums trying to help people out uh, using their Shield devices as they see fit, such as rooting and returning to older versions, things like that. The biggest problem that we've seen is the USB cable and the USB ports themselves. USB is kind of finicky. Uh, USB cables are not all created equal. Not all USB ports are created equal. Your goal, of course, is to use the best quality cable that you can, that you have in your possession, and of course, use a, a USB port that is not temperamental. Many people have tons of USB, uh, micro USB cords laying around. They get them with their external batteries, you know, your little portable batteries. They get them with these other devices that really just need power. And not all of these cables are capable of a nice clean data stream over to the Shield TV. Uh, the other thing that can happen is, is USB ports that are on hubs, right? If you have a USB hub, maybe you're using your keyboard as a hub or your monitor as a hub. These sorts of things can all interfere. So the best thing you can do is take a nice uh, high quality USB cable, plug it into the back USB ports on the machine. Those are the closest to the motherboard. Plug it directly into the Shield Android TV. No extension cables, no uh, USB over Wi-Fi, none of that weird stuff. Trust me, you want this to go as smooth as possible, that's how you do it. All right, we're almost done with this uh, the system right. Then we have seven pieces of vendor stuff to write. And then we're done. We'll reboot. Once it's done, I'll show you that we did indeed lose super user or root access and that your files and your data are safe after the stock recovery. And we're almost done here. we're finished. Press any key. And once again, I fall for clicking on the wrong screen. All right, let's take a look. This first reboot may or may not take just a few extra seconds. So if uh, you're used to the boot sequence, it uh, might be a little bit longer. Probably not, though, for most people. All right, there we are, we're back up. And everything looks just the way we left it, but let's verify. All right, as promised, SuperSU and Explorer are still here. However, if we go into SuperSU, it will tell you clearly that we do not have root access. Nothing we can do about it, sorry. Of course, uh, Explorer is still here, but if you try to go into the root, it's gonna tell you no can do. That's uh, internal storage. No, oh, device doesn't seem to be rooted, so sorry. All right, so there you go. Our data's safe. We're now fresh. We're ready to take an over-the-air upgrade, and life is ducky. Uh, we also have uh, tutorials on how to root. Uh, we also have tutorials for the newer Shield Android TV 2017. We have tutorials for the Shield Android TV Pro 500 gigabytes. So visit NVIDIAShieldZone.com. Uh, Follow the channel, like the video, do all that good stuff to uh, make sure people know that we're giving you the good information. We appreciate you choosing NVIDIA Shield Zone, and uh, thanks for watching. Take care.